What's going on guys, Arax here, welcome back to another Monster Hunter World video and the next episode in my Weapon Workshop tutorial series. This is the series where I go over absolutely everything you could possibly want to know about a given weapon, right from the basic moves available to you, all the way up to the main most efficient combos you should be using and some overarching weapon theory. If you guys missed last week's episode then I went over how to use the Sword and Shield and over the course of the next few weeks I'll be putting together the remaining guides to cover each of the 14 weapons in Monster Hunter World and today we'll continue with that by turning our attention to the Lance. The Lance is another one of Monster Hunter's Iron Wall weapons, as I like to describe them. Alongside Gun Lance, it has one of the strongest shields in the game, allowing hunters to stand their ground at the monster's side and unleash a flurry of unrelenting attacks. Where other weapons typically need to evade incoming strikes from the monster, the Lance can block, counter and continue the assault, making it an exceptional weapon for those who like to adopt the tank-like playstyle. So if you're fed up of chasing the monster back and forth and just want to stick to it like glue, disregarding anything it might throw your way and continue that onslaught, then Lance might just be what you're looking for. Now to begin with, the Lance is a relatively simple weapon. It doesn't have many moves to learn and you'll discover that very shortly, as it's much more about positioning yourself correctly to ensure you're maximizing your damage whilst also standing your ground at the same time. The Lance is a long, piercing weapon, making it an exceptional tool for targeting a monster's weak spot and continually dealing damage to that very particular area. While the damage output per hit might not be as high as some other weapons, your ability to remain rooted to the spot and continue attacking when other weapons will be forced to move is how you rack up the numbers. This weapon, when used correctly, really can be a thorn in a monster's side. However, much like the Gun Lance, the one thing that will take a little adjusting is the way that you move. See, unlike pretty much every other melee weapon, you can't roll with the Lance. So, if an attack comes your way, dodge rolling isn't something you'll be doing. So if that's become the norm for you, then understandably, there'll be a bit of adjusting. The Lance uses hops to reposition, be that back, to the side, or even forward, and if you're not used to the weapon, these may seem a little restrictive at first, hence why some people say the weapon feels clunky the first time they use it. Now, the Lance is far from a clunky weapon, but I can understand why people say that, since at first you might feel somewhat rooted to the spot. But take the time to understand, appreciate and master the movement, and very soon you'll realise it's just as fluid as the rest. Pair that with your incredibly powerful shield and your counter abilities, and dodge rolling will soon become a thing of the past. Why roll, when you can just laugh in the monster's face as it tries to strike you down, only to have that attack shoved right back at it. In short, the Lance is a fantastic weapon, and incredibly satisfying when you master it. So, with all of that covered, now let's go over the moves. First up, pressing triangle three times consecutively will perform your bog standard triple poke combo. Now for Lance, a lot of what you do, be that combos, back steps, or other similar moves, they typically revolve around the number three. You can perform three of these pokes, or thrusts as they're officially known, at which point your combo comes to an end. And then, you need to reset it with either a hop or a counter thrust, but we'll go over that in more detail shortly. With your weapon sheathed, pressing forward and triangle will also allow you to draw straight into that first mid thrust, at which point you can then input triangle a further two times for the remaining hits in the combo. Alternatively, pressing circle three times will perform the high thrust combo, more vertical, good for attacking the head or the chest of a monster, and more importantly, this is the more powerful of the two combos. While you should and will be using both triangle and circle attacks, if the opportunity is there, you typically want to use these as a matter of priority given their higher damage output. Furthermore, you can mix and match those attacks to perform a variety of thrust combos, mid, high, high, or high, mid, high, mid, mid, high, you get the idea. This is handy if the monster moves about, or perhaps if they topple, the head suddenly ends up much closer to the ground, and as a result, the high thrust just simply can't hit. So, while circle is ideal, you will ultimately be using whatever makes sense at any given moment. Pressing triangle and circle together will instead perform the wide sweep. This is, as the name suggests, a wide sweeping attack that can also be worked into your combo, but in truth, You'll use this more so for batting away small monsters or other annoyances in your way. It's not really going to become a staple in your combos. However, as mentioned, it can also be worked in mid-combo should you wish. So examples such as triangle, triangle plus circle, circle. Or you can even start with it, then go into a thrust, and then a second wide sweep. So it has different options. Now moving on from there, let's talk about the back step, one of the core movement options for the Lance. Pressing X with no further directional input will simply see you hop backwards. And much like the last attacks, these back steps can also be chained in threes, so you can triple hop backwards to move away from the target should you need to. Alternatively, you can input a direction with X to hop to the left, the right, or even forwards, which makes moving around much easier. However, it is worth noting that if you want to hop left or right, you'll only be able to do so after the first hop or after an attack. From neutral, you can only hop back or forwards. This is how you'll be moving around and repositioning with the Lance. While it might take a little getting used to if you're coming over for a weapon that simply allows you to switch direction and dodge roll, 
Once you get used to this, you'll appreciate the ability to make minor positional adjustments without taking yourself out of the fight. Furthermore, this is something that can only be done after the first back hop, but if you press back and hold X during the second or third back hops, you'll hop much further. This will end your backstep combo, so to speak. So if you do it during the second hop, there will be no third hop. But if you do it as the third and final hop, the distance covered is pretty large. This is nice in situations where you need to put some distance between you and the monster. However, backstep has another use, outside of simply allowing you to dodge or reposition. I mentioned earlier that following the triple poke combos, you need to reset in order to continue attacking. And that is where the backstep comes in. It's not the only option, and we'll cover the other one soon, but for now, following any triple poke combo, be that triangle, circle, or a mix of both, if you hop in any direction, you can then immediately follow that hop with another triple combo. So stab, 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 hop, repeat. Given that you can hop in any direction, should you need to shuffle left or right a little to maintain pressure on that weak spot, then the option is there for you. But similarly, if the monster moves a little further away, then forward hop might just be what you need to close the gap. Additionally, a handy tip for you, after an evade, if you input a direction with your next thrust, again be that triangle or circle, you can slightly alter the direction that you are attacking. So if you need to better angle yourself to attack a more vulnerable part of the monster, then you can make these adjustments off the back of a hop. Now moving on from there to the third and final component of the lance, the shield. Holding down R2 will allow you to block. As mentioned during the introduction, the lance has one of the strongest shields in the game, allowing you to block some of the most damaging hits. Not all of them, or at least not without supporting armor skills, but you can block most things. You can simply hold up your shield to block, which is handy if you're being bombarded in a corner, but keep in mind that blocking attacks consume stamina and dishes out a little bit of chip damage in the process. You can also draw directly into guard by pressing R2 with your weapon sheathed, and inputting a direction whilst guarding allows you to move around from behind your shield if you want to walk around like a little angry turtle. Pressing triangle whilst holding your shield up performs a guard thrust, a little poke from behind your shield, not especially useful and you can't combo from this, but it's there should you want it. However, much more useful than that, holding down R2 and pressing circle performs the counter thrust. When this activates, you assume this defensive stance, you see this little red glow, and if you're hit during this stance, you'll block and then automatically follow up with a counter attack without you needing to press any further buttons. The attack is a high thrust and what's more, you can then continue into the rest of your combo from this too. So counter thrust, poke, poke. This is a great move to use if you can predict an incoming attack or a monster roar instead of blocking, which results in a certain degree of knockback and delayed follow up options. The counter thrust allows you to take a hit and then get right back into the action. However, it's worth noting your ability to counter attack effectively is also linked to your guard ability. Simple, weaker attacks will see you follow up directly with your counter attack pretty quickly. Meanwhile, attacks with more force will push you back further, in turn delaying the follow up counter attack. So this is where guard skills can help. Stacking guard to improve your guarding ability and reduce knockback allows for a more reliable counter attack on stronger moves. However, it doesn't end there. See, the counter attack comes from holding R2 and pressing circle, but if you instead just press R2 instead of holding it down and press circle, you will then perform a cancel thrust. This performs the same animation, but then follows straight into the high thrust, and this is another option for resetting your combos. Following a triple poke, instead of hopping like before, you can instead press R2 and circle, and following that, go straight back into your combo. The first hit following the cancel thrust is a high thrust and counts as the first hit of the combo, but sometimes this is a better option, especially if the monster is focusing on you. See, even though it's referred to as a cancel thrust, it does still perform the block counter animation from the counter thrust, albeit quickly. So while the window is small in the heat of battle, this allows you to absorb an attack and continue that onslaught. Meanwhile, had you opted to backstep, the hit might have sent you flying. There's value in both and you'll use both, but this is really a good option if you want to play more aggressively. Moving on from there, holding R2 and pressing forward and triangle perform the guard dash. This allows you to move forward a good distance with your shield up, in turn allowing you to advance in safety. Plus, this dash then also has some interesting follow-up options. Pressing triangle after the guard dash performs a shield attack. This does impact damage, and from there you can then go into your triple poke combos. Also note that the shield attack doesn't count as the first hit, so you can follow this with a full triple combo. Alternatively, if you press circle following the guard dash, you'll perform a leaping thrust. If this lands, it hits three times, and again, you can follow this into the remainder of the triple poke combo. But in this instance, that leaping thrust counts as the first hit, so you only get an additional two hits in before you need to reset. 
You can also work a guard dash in mid combo if, say, the monster moves away or gets knocked over and you want to minimize downtime between your next onslaughts. So for example, circle, circle, R2, four plus triangle, then circle, and then continue the assault. However, it doesn't end there. Much like the back steps, the guard dash can also go in different directions. In this instance, you can only do this following an attack or a back step, but if you input an alternate direction, either left, right, or back, whilst holding R2 and pressing triangle, you can guard dash that way too. Again, with the same follow-up options, shield attack or leaping thrust. This move is also a good way to cover ground outside of the dash attack, which we'll speak about shortly. You can chain guard dash into leaping thrust and do this on repeat to cover ground and attack on the way forward. However, there's yet one more layer to your guard, a new move added in Monster Hunter World called the Power Guard. If you hold R2, press circle to initiate the counter thrust, and then while still holding R2, press X, You'll cancel the counter thrust and go into the power guard, where your shield will glow white. When in this stance, you have an incredibly strong block, and even the strongest attacks won't move you. Whilst in this, your stamina depletes at an incredibly fast rate, however, the second you're hit, your stamina depletion halts until you recover from the hit. So essentially, this is something you use reactively when you know you're about to block a powerful attack. Case in point being something like Nogagante's Dive Bomb. Note that you cannot do this following a cancel thrust, it has to be off the back of a counter thrust. But once you get used to the input, you can do it pretty fast. Hold R2, circle, and then X. You can also rotate whilst in power guard 2, using your left analog stick. However, following a power guard, pressing triangle will again initiate the leaping thrust that hits three times on impact. Meanwhile, pressing circle initiates the counter thrust. Now, it's worth noting that unlike the normal counter thrust, which automatically follows up with the counter, for power guard, you need to trigger it yourself. But this then has the added bonus of letting you use the move even if you didn't counter a move. And since this is a pretty powerful attack, that's actually pretty handy. Also worth noting that you can input any direction with the counter thrust to spin an attack in that direction. Good if perhaps you want to attack behind you. Finally, you can also press triangle and circle together while in the power guard stance to initiate the final move for the lance, the dash attack, which brings me nicely onto that move. So you can also perform this much easier by simply guarding and pressing triangle plus circle. You don't need to do it from power guard, that's merely an option. When you initiate this move, you'll begin charging with your lance. This consumes stamina, but if you continue to run, you'll pick up speed. At first, you'll get a small speed boost. Then if you run long enough, you'll go into super speed. This is a good way to chase a fleeing monster and also just attack them multiple times. See, attacking with this does multiple hits, making it good for, say, proccing a status effect if you have something like a paralysis lance, for example. But keep in mind, this also tears through your sharpness, so it's not exactly something you'll be using in your average gameplay encounters, but it does still have some interesting uses. Furthermore, once you've initiated the dash attack, you have some additional input options. You can use the left stick to steer and gradually alter your direction, and you can press R2 to stop into a guard if you see danger ahead. Alternatively, pressing X will simply stop you with no guard, but pressing forward and X will allow you to jump, and you can then follow this with a triangle input for an airborne thrust, which does do mounting damage. So you can use the lance to mount a monster even if there's no ledge. Additionally, pressing back and X will allow you to turn 180 degrees and start running the other direction, and pressing left or right and X will allow you to side hop. Pressing triangle or circle will then end this run with a finishing thrust, and if you're running at super speed, this will do a twin thrust instead. And finally, pulling back and pressing triangle will stop you in your tracks, but you'll also end it with a reverse sweeping attack. This move also has a few additional options when done on slopes and walls, so that brings us nicely onto the final part, aerial moves. While sliding down a hill, pressing triangle triangle will draw into an advancing jump followed by an advancing jump thrust, of course dealing mounting damage that applies for all aerial moves. However, if you're performing the dash attack and you run down a hill, you'll start sliding. You can then press X and triangle to jump and thrust, or you can simply press triangle to finish the slide into a twin thrust. If you jump off a ledge and press triangle, you perform a jumping thrust. Meanwhile, if you perform the dash attack off a ledge, you can again go into the jumping thrust. If you run up a wall and press triangle, once again, you do a jumping thrust. But more interestingly, if you perform the dash attack into a runnable wall, you'll run up, spin around and leap off, allowing you to either follow up with triangle for another jumping thrust, or simply let the motion carry you and continue running in the opposite direction. Now, with all the moves covered, how do we tie it all together? What combo should you be using to do the most damage? Well, as mentioned at the beginning, on the combo front, the Lance is a relatively simple weapon, and largely, you're gonna be poking and repositioning. Your first combo, your bread and butter combo, if you will, is simply three circle inputs, followed by a reset, be that hop or counter thrust, into another three circle inputs, and you do this on loop. The benefit of the Lance being a long, piercing weapon is that you can use the precise nature to target a weak spot and keep on attacking it, so that's ultimately what you'll be doing a lot of the time. As mentioned, you may, from time to time, sub out the circle attacks for triangle if the monster is on the ground and the high thrusts aren't hitting, but where possible, try to use high thrusts since they do more damage. 
If you're playing aggressively, remember that the cancel thrust is the better option, but if you need to reposition, then hop to reset instead. Another variation of this combo uses the counter thrust from the power god since it's such a strong attack. This combo can still be looped, but it's a little bit slower and doesn't flow quite as nicely, but you can go R2 plus circle, then X into power god, then press circle for the counter thrust, and then two more circle inputs for the remainder of the combo, at which point you can then loop back and start from the beginning. Slower, but it takes advantage of the damage from the counter thrust, and since it factors in the power guard, should you get hit at the beginning, you'll also be able to absorb the hit and follow up for good damage. Additionally, you have your combo options from the guard dash. First up, R2 plus forward plus triangle, with a second triangle input for the shield attack, and then three circle inputs, and then you can do this on repeat. Alternatively, you can press circle instead for the leaping thrust, hitting three times in place of the shield thrust, and then go into the remainder of the circle combo. And if you really want to get this on loop, then you can do this following the circle combo, full high thrust combo into a guard dash back, then press circle for the leaping thrust forward, complete the circle combo and repeat. The nice thing about this one is that it jumps you back and then forward, so it's less prone to messing up your positioning and allows you to largely remain rooted on the spot. But no matter what combo you ultimately decide to use, be sure to stick at the monster's side as much as possible and take advantage of your counters and your shield to maintain your barrage of attacks. Target those weak spots, counter and follow up for big damage. Now, to round things out, let's very quickly go over some handy armor skills that you might want to consider when using this weapon. As always, your typical attack focus skills like attack boost, weakness exploit, critical eye, critical boost, agitator, maximum might, or even peak performance, those will have value with this weapon, especially skills like weakness exploit and crit boost since you'll ideally be using the precise nature of the weapon to target those weak spots. However, on top of that, God is a great skill if you really want to take full advantage of that incredibly powerful shield. While God is not necessary, as mentioned earlier, with higher guard skill, you get less knockback, which allows for faster counterattacks following the more powerful monster hits. Additionally, the Uragan set bonus, Guard Up, also available as a decoration. This allows you to block otherwise unblockable attacks, so things like Teosha's Supernova or Xenogiva's Laser Beam. Handicraft is of course a nice skill, especially if you can unlock the white sharpness in the process. Razor Sharp, good if you want to reduce the rate at which you lose sharpness, or better still, Protective Polish to stop sharpness depletion altogether for 60 seconds following a weapon sharpen. Mind's Eye is another option if you want to avoid any of your attacks bouncing, not a high priority in truth, since if you're targeting weak spots you likely won't be bouncing anyway, but still, it's an option. Of course you have Elemental and Status options if you want to spec that way, and if you choose to, then the accompanying Crit Element or Crit Status skills from the Rathalos and Zoro Magdros set bonuses are also a nice addition too. There are of course, as always, plenty of other skill options too, but to get you started, those are some handy skills. Now finally, as always, to round out the tutorial, we're going to dive into a complete hunt in the arena to show the weapon being used in combat to try and tie it all together and make sense of everything we've just covered. For this one, we're fighting Azure Rathalos, and I'm using the new Devil Joe Lance, partly because it's awesome and new, and also because it has Dragon Element and Azure Wrath is weak to Dragon. Now to kick things off, I've pre-equipped my flash bombs and I've also sharpened my weapon since I have protective polish, so I'll make that small bit of white sharpness on the Devil Joe Lance go a little bit further. I'm going to open with a mount since it's easy damage, however as you'll see very soon, I jump off early and flash to knock Wrath out of the sky. The reason I did that is because in this arena, he has this super annoying habit of flying over the Dragonator, then when he goes down, his head gets stuck in the wall, and I kind of want to attack the head, so I decided to drop him early. Either way, with him on the ground, I'm focusing on the head and using my circle combo for damage, and since I'm close, I'm still able to use it even though it attacks more vertically. Now, I'm mindful that he hasn't roared yet, and likely will do soon, and I want to try and catch that with my counter if possible, but since he's flashed, he's still a little bit erratic. The flinch on his head made him move back a little bit, and I'm still able to use my hops to reposition and maintain that assault on the head, ensuring there is minimal downtime between my attacks. Not entirely sure why he felt so inclined to go up on the ledge here, but I'm not usually one to pass up an opportunity, so I decided to drop a trap here, and then I can use that to get some more free damage when he comes back down. Again, once he's trapped, I'm using the same combo, since it's quick, safe, and allows me to keep up the damage with next to no downtime. Now, since he's out of the trap, as you might expect, the roar is next, so I pull off a successful counter thrust, which will allow me to then keep attacking through the roar. Now, this set doesn't have any guard skills on it, so there was a little bit of knockback, but nothing that prevents me from following up. Also, if you fought Azure Wrath before, you'll know that following a roar, he likes to jump back and drop that fireball, but luckily, I got another flinch, which interrupted him. The main thing to keep in mind is that anytime I think I'm about to be attacked, I aim to try and pull off that counter. Doing so usually keeps me safe, but also gives me the opportunity to follow up instead of being pushed back. 
If we then fast forward a little bit, I managed to get the nice tail cut, and since that put him a bit further away, I used the dash attack to close the gap. Let's just pretend that I didn't miss the jump attack afterwards. <laughs> anyway, at this point, the fight carries on as normal. He tries to get a couple of those stomps, which again, I'm able to counter. So all this time, you can see how I'm able to just stick to Wrath's side and continue attacking, where other weapons would have typically been forced to dodge roll out of the way. I did take a pretty nasty hit and got comboed a little bit, so that was a minor setback, but after a quick max potion, I'm back in the action. The flash brings Wrath down to the ground again, allowing me to maintain focus on the head, but shortly after that, since he turns around, the damage on the legs cause him to trip instead, and that, once again, opens up more damage opportunities. And beyond that point, it's really much the same. As mentioned, the moveset and the combos you'll be doing are pretty straightforward, but mastery of this weapon comes in knowing when to counter, and in select situations, power guard, so that that way you can keep up your assaults. But for the time being, that is pretty much it. That was my tutorial for the Lance. Hopefully you guys found it helpful, and if you did, then a like would be super appreciated, and be sure to comment down below if you guys have any questions. Keep it locked as the next weapon workshop will be next Sunday. But until then, thanks for watching. Take it easy. Catch you next time. Peace out.